Ladies and gentlemen, back on my Steve and Sully study podcast and also on the Woodbury House YouTube channel, I've got a Zoom podcast interview ready to start. Now, most people out there in the wider world know Woodbury House as being the household name for Richard Hambleton, who is known by the New York Times as the Godfather Street Art. My next guest, I'm so privileged, I'm so honoured, I'm so excited to be speaking to what France calls this man as the father of graffiti stencil. So, Black the Rat, thank you very much for your time and welcome on board. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here with you today. We've got a huge, huge passion for the Richard Hamilton market and we've also got, you know, quite naturally, organically, when you fall in love with a, a narrative like Hamilton's and also fall in love with his style and what he stood for, then you start realising that there's many other people that he's influenced and many other great artists that maybe have not got the, you know, the kind of recognition they deserve. And your name always comes up. You know, you cannot speak about Richard Hamilton or even Street Art without referencing you. So I want to jump into a quote here, which I've written down, and I want to say it back to you, and then I want to get your feedback on it, if, if I may, okay? So this is from the internet. In actual fact, I think we got it from the Guardian newspaper, okay? The American artist from New York City was the first street artist to export his work all over the world. It was really incredible to do that in the beginning of the 80s. Richard Hamilton's shadow men that I discovered in Paris, in France, were a great inspiration to me. He's the only artist I have ever bought a painting off and one of the greatest. And this is a quote apparently by you. So is that an accurate quote? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I, I found uh, Richard Hamilton in Paris in 1980. Three or four, I don't remember exactly now, but uh, it was, you know, it was something so strong in the street, you know, that uh, I, I was really uh, amazed by his work, you know. And uh, after that, I decided to make huge stencils because before I used to make only rats and uh, some uh, faces of, uh, of my friends. And, uh, Something like that. It was small pieces of, a, uh, of, a, uh, and when I when I saw the first Richard Hamilton, I was completely, uh, uh, I can't say, I don't know. It was a big flash in my head, you know, and uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's it's incredible, uh, incredible. Yeah. Was he one of the first artists to inspire you to start doing your stencil work, or was you doing it before? No, no I started before. I started in 1981 in Paris. Uh, so it was uh, two or three years before <clears throat> that. But um, uh, also, the next, the, the, uh, in 1985, if I remember well, uh, uh, I, I made a trip in Napoli, in uh, Italy, and uh, Richard Hamilton made also some pieces in uh, in Napoli. And uh, the second time I saw uh, this work, I, I was really, really impressed. So impressed that uh, I decided actually again to make large size of uh, paintings in the street. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it was so strong. Yeah. So strong. Yeah. In, in my humble opinion, he's the best artist, uh, street artist in the world. Yeah. Even now, nobody uh, reached his level, you know, in a, in a, in the art world. You know, he's, he's, a, he's the biggest, in my ability, you know. And did you ever meet Richard Hamilton? No, actually, I've never met him. No, to uh, one of my, uh, you know, uh, disappointment that uh, I never met him. Uh, I knew that he was uh, very sick uh, in the last years, and 
actually, um, yeah, I had some. Uh, uh, I read some interview of him on the uh, on the newspaper also, uh, uh, but I never met him actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pity. Yeah, it's a I mean, pity. I share the same regret because when I started on his market in 2014, he was alive. And there was a few opportunities yeah. that I had to go to New York and meet him. But sadly, uh, timing wasn't right from my end and his end. And uh, the only thing I got was an opportunity to be on the phone uh, on a conference with him and Andy Val Morbida. So, really? yeah, so, oh. I was, so I, I was on there. And um, look, the second best, you know, um, scenario is I didn't get to meet him, but now... Woodbury House, the company or the brand that I founded back in 2014, have become the official key advisor to the Richard Hamilton archive, which is really, really cool. We've done a show yeah. for the Richard Hamilton Nightlife series, which are uh, 53 bodies of works from 1985, which are called Nightlife, they're original. Okay. And we've done this at the Saatchi Gallery in Chelsea, which was super, super cool. Um, so, so going, going off of this quote here, he, he's the only artist I have ever bought a painting off. Um, yeah. So <laughs> do, do you collect any other artwork now or is it just Hamilton? Yeah. We make a, a lot of exchange. We, know, we exchange uh, artwork with the other artists. I have many, I have a bouncy, I have, uh, I have uh, many uh, artists, uh, Pure Hebel, uh, uh, Shepard Ferris. And, but... Uh, uh, I never buy, you know. But the only the, the only artist I bought, the contemporary artist I bought was uh, was uh, Richard Bolton. I bought it in a, at the Christie's in New York, and I paid um, something like uh, uh, if I remember very cheap, like three thousand euros, which is about the. Uh, I don't know in, in pound, but uh, it, it was very cheap. Is three thousand euros isn't too far away from the pound at the moment? Um, so was I don't know how much it was now. yeah. So um, how many years ago was that? It was nineteen ninety. Wow, so a long time ago. That must be it. What type of uh, piece is it? Is it a standing shadow man or? It's a shadow man. Yeah, it's a shadow man on the, the large piece on on paper. Okay. Uh, about seven foot high on, uh, I would say, three foot, four foot uh, uh, large. Very, very large, very big piece. I can send you a photo if you want. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, if you ever wanted to sell, just think about us. But, uh, you know, these pieces now, you know, people are, are asking, even ones on paper, hundreds of thousands, you know. Canvases are, are going, you know, even higher. So, look, great investment, and, and no doubt you're going to do extremely well off the back end of that whenever you choose to sell. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to sell it, you know. I, I don't need money, actually. So, uh, uh, my my son will sell it later. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's what a lot of our clients do. They, they purchase Hamilton's so they can... Uh, give it down to their children or their grandchildren. And it is, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's something for, for, the, for the family in the future. So yeah. I, um, I, I, I sent over some questions because typically when I do my podcast, it's kind of, you know, I roughly know what I'm going to talk about, but it's slightly freestyle. Um, but where, you know, uh, you, you know, you're French speaking and um, you wanted to have a rough idea, I thought this time I would you know, write down some questions so we can systematically go through them. So okay. the first question I, I sent over to you was, um, so you're, you're known as one of the founders of street art. Um, what actually got you started? Was you always into street art or even art? And did you learn about it at school? How, how did you start? I started because uh, I made a trip in New York in 1972. So at, at that time I was, 21 years old, and uh, I found out the old graffiti in New York, and I realized at that time that uh, that something was happening there. You know, something very strong was was happening in art, actually in art, 
uh, for me, it was art, already art. You know, it was not something uh, done like uh, like something uh, some uh, rebel rebel people making something uh, uh, strange. But uh, for me, it was a uh, uh, already a piece of art, and uh, so that was my first. Uh, my first uh, meeting with uh, this kind of expression. And uh, so it took me about 10 years to realize, to digest uh, what I've seen in New York. And in 1981, about 10 years after, I, I started to make uh, some graffiti in Paris. Uh, actually, I didn't want to uh, imitate American graffiti because Paris is a different city and uh, it's not New York, you know, so uh, uh, I didn't want to, uh, I, I felt that, uh, uh, you know, Ameri I love American pieces, and I really love tags and everything like that, uh, really, but I didn't want to emit it then, because uh, it was not appropriate to uh, my country, my culture, so uh, I had in my mind uh, an, an um, an expression and a, 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 a technique called uh, stencil. Because when I was about 10 years old, I made a trip in, in, uh, in Italy with my parents. And I remember to have seen some uh, fascist propaganda made with stencil. Uh, it was vestige. I saw some vestige of the World War II fascist propaganda on the wall of uh, Padova in uh, Italy. And I remember to ask to my father, uh, why people are doing this? You know, what does it mean? And uh, my father explained to me the, the technique and uh, everything like that. So I didn't invent anything, you know, I just not copy, but uh, I, to, uh, I was uh, influenced by many different uh, paths. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so, um, so I decided to make a stencil for that, this reason. Also, you have to be uh, you, you, when you work in the street, you know, illegally, you have to do it very fast because of police, because of the people, because of many different reasons. Uh, so, um, so the stencil is a very appropriate technique to do something fast, uh, really quick, you know, and uh, and uh, so I, I use this technique, but I invent the the technique. You know, it, it was already uh, invented by uh, many other people before me. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, like, like I said at the start of the um, of, of the interview, um, you know, you're known as the father of the stencil graffiti, um, and like you said, you know, there are people before you that started street art, and there are people before you that started stencils, but not many of them were were kind of blazing a trail so much where people recognise them as a as the founder. So you're clearly one of the founders and so much so that people always speak about the debate, you know, who really kind of, you know, um, who is the one who's going to get the recognition for the stencil art? Is it going to be you or is it going to be others? And one of them is always get thrown, thrown into the mix, which is Banksy. Um, yeah. So Banksy's clearly adopted some of your influence. Um, first of all, how do you feel about that as an artist? Uh, it, it, I'm very happy with that, you know. Uh, it's a privilege because, you know, uh, I really like Boxy. He's, he's a great guy, you know. Uh, actually, I never met him <laughs> again, but but uh, no, I'm very I'm very happy with this, you know. Uh, no problem. Yeah, cool. And um, so with with um, I know on the internet on on the net it says um, there's been a few times that. Both of you would like to, at some point, collaborate with each other. How uh, how close have you got to that before? What do you mean? Uh, if I 
May, I, may, I, I didn't understand. I'm sorry. Uh, you, if I, you and Banksy may be potentially collaborating together. Would that be a possibility? Uh, I would love to. <laughs> it would be uh, something uh, I would be honored. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, not... so, sorry, go on, carry on. No, no, it's okay. So, um, your tag name. Look, the rat. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, quite clearly, it's not your your birth name. So, what? Why did you come up with that name, Black the Rat? I mean, what, what does that mean? It means uh, Black the Rat uh, because I was uh, painting rats in Paris. Par- Actually, Paris is full of rats, millions of rats. Same as London. Uh, like in London, <laughs> yeah. okay. But and uh, so also in in rats, it's an anagram of art. You know, so uh, it worked. It, it worked for me. You know, you, I, I love the the connection between, between art, rat, and everything. The name Blake comes from uh, a comic uh, that uh, we used to read in the, my child, childhood called Blake Blake Le Rock. You know, it was Blake Le Rock. It was an Italian uh, uh, comic book, and uh, so. You know, I took those names. Uh, the, those, uh, I love the, I love, I love the, I love the uh, connection with my child, childhood, and uh, uh, also, yeah. And you, you have to be anonymous in the street, so you, you can't sign with your real name because you can have, you can have problems with the police, yeah, and everything. So uh, it's better to take a pseudonym and. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Well, yeah. So, um, I, I, knowing Hamilton's market, he started in the late seventies and then obviously moved into the eighties, and his his style started to change slightly. And then eventually, in the eighties, I mean, just behind me, I've got a standing shadow man here, and then next to it, I have I only have eyes for you. Um, which that was the birth of his shadow figures because he used to plaster them up the side of the wall and as they disintegrated, what was left was a shadow figure. So yeah, no, yeah. was there any anything in your start of your journey where you had a particular style and then it, it evolved into something else? Did it ever influence other works of art that you started to, to do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you mean uh, if my work influenced? Uh... Well, did you, you did you start with uh, the the rats as in a stencil, and then did the rats turn into other things, or was it always just you know the the rats that you used to paint in the eighties? Uh, in the uh, early eighties, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, painting only rats, yeah, rats and their faces and some faces. Uh, and, and when I when I as I said before, I was influenced by uh, by re- really by Richard because uh, it was so huge and so strong that uh, uh, I said uh, it's impossible to to make uh, small pieces in the streets. You know, you have to be huge in the streets if you want to be seen. So uh, because. Uh, most impo- the most important thing when you work in the street is uh, to be seen, you know, by people. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and uh, yeah. It's, uh, so uh, yeah, so I was influenced also by many different things. Also, yeah. Okay, so the business of art, you started on the streets. And then eventually you go on to paper or canvas or different mediums. Then you can start selling it uh, via galleries and art dealers. When did you transition to galleries onto paper or canvases? Uh, Actually, very early. uh, In Paris, uh, you know, uh, 1984 or five. Some galleries started to be interested by uh, the work, by my work in the street. So uh, the transition was really 
really uh, fast, you know, between the trees and the and the galleries. Uh, some people think that uh, it's an uh, it's something wrong to go to galleries and to try to, to uh, but as, as in my opinion, it's important to keep a memory. The street, the the the, the artwork I make for galleries is a, it's a, only a memory, you know, of what happened before in the street. Okay. Uh, and I think it's important. I think it's important because, for example, we don't have. Uh, Anything left from uh, Taki 183, for example, yeah. in New York, in, the, in New York, in the, in 19 in in the 70s, uh, because uh, at that time he did, uh, no gallery was interested, or uh, no museum, or uh, nobody was interested by uh, this this uh, this art. Yeah. So uh, yeah. 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 I think it's important yeah, to be in, in galleries and. To show other things than uh, than uh, the things in the street. Yeah, and where um, where have you worked? Which countries and which different galleries have you worked with around the world? Oh, uh, many galleries. Yeah, many, many, all over the world. Actually, I have to say thank you to uh, Great Britain because. Uh, uh, in 2006, you know, a guy from a guy called Mike Snell from uh, Cambridge called me, and uh, he told me, uh, "Oh, Blake, uh, I, I had your name, I had your phone call. Uh, I, I don't remember how he got my phone call, but uh, he called me and he said, uh, uh, do, 'Do you make? Do you paint? Uh, are you still painting? You know.'" And, uh, in your studio, and I said yes, uh, I'm still working. And he said, okay, I come tomorrow. And so he took the uh, Eurostar and I picked him at the station in Paris. And he said uh, he came to my house and he said, oh, that's very interesting. I'm gonna have a show in uh, London uh, next September uh, in Leonard Street Gallery. And uh, I said, wow, for something because. You know, I had a kind of a, uh, a slow work between uh, 2000, uh, uh, 1993 to 2006. You know, I didn't, I, I, I continued to work in the street, but uh, I didn't sell anything actually for a long period of time. And everything started again uh, with this guy, Mike, Mike Snell, you know. And uh, and after that, you know, I had a show in uh, at um, in Los Angeles at the gallery at the Shepard Ferris Gallery. Yeah. Uh, also in the <clears throat> in many countries. Yeah. After that, but so, every, everything started in London, actually. Well, I've got to say, I mean, you know, there's so much uh, buzz in London about the street art genre and, and sector. And again, the, the Hambleton market, there's been so much demand, certainly in the UK, for Hambleton's works because everybody knows there's a few things that are going to be happening in the next year or two which are going to drive his market. And I also think that since his death in 2017, people realise that no more work can be produced and therefore they're... Um, you know they're anxious about you know getting getting some original works. There's there's an urgency there. So oh, really, you know when when in your experience, because am I right in saying that you're in roughly in your seventies? You what? You're you're roughly in your seventies. You're you was born in nineteen fifty two. Yeah. Nine. Okay. Nine. Um. So you know you must have known a lot of artists over your lifetime, and when they passed mm -hmm. away. The demand becomes heavier, yeah, and that obviously pushes the prices up. Yeah. Where where do you see, uh, first of all, Richard Hamilton's market going since his death? Where do you see it going? Like how high? No, yeah, yeah, and I, no, I didn't see it actually. Uh, I, I don't. Um, 
uh, I'm not really interested by auctions and things like that. So I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, so the price are really uh, expensive now. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're they're going going pretty expensive. And your your own market, I mean, where where do you see it going? I know you're not interested in auctions, and it's about the art, but the future of Black the Rats, you I know, don't know, you know, are you going to do collaborations with artists or clothing companies? Because I interviewed a few street artists from New York, uh, Cope yeah. Two, uh, yeah. Crash, Days, yeah. and they've they've done collaborations with Nike. Converse, Levi's, Hennessy, and yeah. when they do those collaborations, it brings a wider audience to collecting their works. So, are you have you have you ever done anything like that? Or yes, I've worked for uh, Hugo Boss. Wow. You know, the, yeah. You know, uh, also with the Hong Kong um, company called um, Pop Light in Hong Kong. Uh, not too many, no. I, I, I accept accepted the, those two those two companies. Uh, no, I don't. Um, it's not. It's not really my work, you know. Yeah. It's not really my uh, goal, also. Okay. Uh, I, uh, it's true that I don't care. I don't care. Uh, I'm more uh, interesting in, in in art and paint than uh, working in my studio. Uh, so if I have the opportunity to work with Nike, of course. Oh, also, no, I, I worked uh, for uh, Puma. 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 Yeah. Yeah, in, Puma, in South America. Nice. In South America, and, uh, yeah. In Chile, uh, Peru, uh, Mexico, and uh, and, uh, and uh, other countries. So, and, so, uh, so what's next for you? I mean, are you going to just carry on painting or...? No, I, I, you know, n right now, since a year now, uh, for a year, I, I, I'm working in my studio uh, all the time. I'm, a, I'm not an, an heavy worker because uh, I work three, four hours every day. But I, I work every day, every day, and uh, I only do that. You know, it's my passion. And, uh, uh, I'm very happy to... Uh, <clears throat> to I can live with my art now, you know, and uh, I'm wealthy and uh, and uh, everything is. Uh, and thank you, thank you to Banksy also for that, you know, because I really think that uh, Banksy uh, is a huge. Uh, he, he manages his career like a uh, god, you know. It's absolutely incredible the the career he's making in the, all all over the world. So thank you to Banksy also because uh, he, uh, before him uh, uh, I could live with my art, but not so good. Mm -hmm. But now it's incredible. That's good. <laughs> really incredible. So uh, who would you say typically uh, buys your art now? Who who are the type of people that buys your art? Uh, so it, I, I sell my art all over the world. Actually, I, I don't meet the people usually we sell through galleries or through internet or through uh, different uh, media but uh, I met very rarely my co my collectors okay very rarely I, I met someone uh, some some of my collectors in the United States or in England also but uh, it's rare it's pretty rare Okay, okay. And how much is a typical Black the Rat? You know, if I were to say I want to buy one of your originals, how much would it be? Uh, for a large size, it's a large size which is 2 meters by uh, 1 meters uh, 40. It's, um, uh, it's not so expensive. It's 50,000 euros. Okay. Compare, it's not expensive compared to uh, Banksy, compared yeah. to Banksy or uh, or um, Space Invaders or people like him. You know. But it, uh, it's, it's, I'm okay with that. You know, I don't. It's uh, a good price. It's a lot of, anyway, it's a lot of money. You know, it's a lot of money, and uh, it's something uh, that I would never expect before. You know. Yeah. 
Um, you mentioned about, you know, Banksy being a bit like a, a god in the street art sector. And we've already spoken about your reference to Richard Hamilton, but there's also a memo to Banksy in the Shadow Man documentary. And it says, you owe Richard Hamilton a small fortune in royalties. Would you say that Banksy also got inspiration from Richard Hamilton? Uh, I'm not sure. No, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. No. Uh, he was more inspired by my work. Your know? work, yeah. Uh, also, I, we have to say we know that uh, um, uh, Richard was not very famous. Ten years ago, nobody knew him. You know, mm. when I was, I remember even in New York City. Uh, in 2006, I was talking about people, about Richard Button, and nobody knew him. You know? Yeah. He was, a, he was completely forgotten by people. And that's why... That yeah. That time too, about uh, 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. But in 2009, uh, he, he came back and he'd done five shows around the world with Giorgio Armani, and that's when everyone started talking yeah. about him again. But... Yeah. um. Okay, so look, um, we as a brand, you know, we're in, we're in the street art uh, genre predominantly with Richard Hamilton's work, but in the future, we would like to work with you, uh, Black the Rat. I think it would be a really cool collaboration and maybe we could do a show in Paris or we could do two shows, one in London and one in Paris. How would you feel about I, that? I would London, you know, you know, you know, Paris is, a, in my opinion, it's a very bad city for art, you know, People, they have some little interest with street art, but uh, no, London, London is the best place. You know, London, Los Angeles uh, are the best place for street art, uh, yeah. in my opinion. Um, so just a wider question, street art as a genre, how have you seen it change since the 80s or since you started? Uh, it changed a lot. Now, uh, now it's a really a global, uh, a global art all over the world. You know, uh, there is no city in the world without graffiti now. It's, uh, every, even in China, you know, he, some people are working in the street. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, something absolutely incredible. Uh, I would never imagine when I started that it, w- it grew. It will grow like that, you know. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's incredible. Also, uh, there is, we can't speak about street art because it, there are so many different uh, schools of uh, expression in street art now. If you see uh, Space Invaders, he, he, it's a completely different technique, and uh, some people make uh, also different. Uh, Different things, so um, so it's. Uh, I think it's the most important uh, movement of art of uh, all the time. Uh, when you uh, when you think uh, about the art history, uh, a, a movement like that never exists before. You know, it's so huge, so important. So uh, it, it's a huge market also, and. Uh, uh, so we are living something very uh, special and very interesting in art, really, really interesting. And uh, I really think that uh, street art uh, will be the art of the 21st century. I think uh, so. I'm pretty sure, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that at the end of this century, people will continue to work uh, in the street. We, um, we as a brand have been around for seven years and what we've noticed in the last 12 months since coronavirus started, yeah, we're seeing a lot more investors yeah. putting their money into street art, not just Hambleton, but across Space Invader, yeah, you're right. um, you, know, you know, Banksy, obviously, you've got people like Futura, you know, and the, clearly they're protecting their money because banks are failing um, and the stock market is failing. 
Um, and they're also making a huge amount of money. I mean, Banksy, yeah. last year, his market rose by 226%, his limited editions. So I know you don't particularly yeah. watch the auctions, but how do you feel about people making so much money from, from street art? Uh, you know, it's, uh, art is a commodity, like... Uh Sorry, I just uh, lost you for a second there. Sorry, yeah. Uh, you can you can hear me now? Yeah, I've got you now. So you said art is like a commodity, like like gold, yeah? Yeah, it's a commodity. Commodity. So uh, it's normal thing, you know. I'm not against the fact that uh, people spend their money and uh, buy. Uh, Uh, by art and uh, Zen and it's okay. Just against that, you know, it's a, it's a commodity, you know, it's, uh, it's normal. For me, it's something normal. Yeah, yeah, and like... Some people are really, really angry against, uh, about the fact that the people in the street, they sell... I know. So expensive. Yeah. So much expensive. What? But where? When I sp uh, have spoken to some artists and some people from the art market... They're very defensive about, you know, people profiting from artists. But yeah. the secondary benefits of art is trading, you know. And as you just said, because of, you know, the market and some other people that has influenced your market, like Banksy, it's made you allow you to sell your artwork for more money. And, Absolutely. And, you, and, you, and would you say you're, you've done very well? You're quite wealthy off the back end of that now? Absolutely, I'm quite w wealthy, and uh, it's incredible. You know, it's incredible. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to live this in my life. I would never imagine when I started to uh, work in the streets in 1981 that I could make so much money with the uh, with the with my art. You know, it's uh, and it's it's something normal also. You know, why not? You know the. Uh, when you are, yeah, it's normal, it's normal. Cool. So, look, um, I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, yeah. Where can the audience find you if they wanted to buy your work? Uh, they can uh, have a website. Uh, so uh, they, can, they can buy uh, my work uh, through internet and uh, also, so in the United States, uh, we, uh, I have, I'm rep represented by uh, a guy called Brian Grief uh, in Los Angeles. So uh, uh, and also I, have, uh, I work for a gallery in Chicago. Uh, okay. And hopefully yeah. we could do something, Woodbury House and Black the Rat in, in London. I think that would be very cool. Yeah, I would love to, you know. I would... The last time I had a show in London was in nineteen, uh, in two thousand thirteen, if I remember well. So a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, I would love to go back to London because uh, it also it's a, it's, a, it's the best place in the world to uh, for street art, you know. Yeah, so, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, what one more thing? So when I started my podcast, I came up with a slogan, which is called "Be Happy." never content be yeah. happy never content if i was yeah, to, if i were to ask you what does be happy never content to black the rat what does that mean to you um you you mean uh, uh yeah be happy never content you know uh, i'm happy and i never content also, yeah. You want to you want to push on all the time, yeah? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm very happy. You know, very, we are very happy in the in the family. Everybody is happy. You know? All right. But, uh, we have great great life. Good. All right. Well, look. Let's stay in communication. This podcast comes yeah. out in in the next week or so. It's going to go live on yeah. my my channel. It's going to go live on the Woodbury House channel. And anything you can do to get this this interview out, sharing it or just telling your friends, that would be much appreciated. 
Uh, I want to thank you very much. I think you're a, a great artist. I think you're a legend. I think you've got a very, very bright thank future you. ahead. And I would love to collect your work personally and love to do a collaboration with you. And let's see if we can make something happen, okay? Okay, okay. Thank you, Stephen. All right, everyone who's listening to this right now, please follow Black the Rat. Please subscribe. Please comment. And uh, everyone, be happy, never content. Thank you, Black the Rat. Thank you. Yeah, never content. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.